Hey now, Cashflow Carl here, long-haired Luke, the short-term shop, and uh, getting upstream on a on a situation here. We get off asked very often, what is a septic system? How does a septic system work? What is a septic tank? I hear this often. I need a new septic tank. No, you don't. You probably don't. So let's kind of go over what a septic system is, what it looks like, what it does for the property. So you got the house. It's a little blurry. I apologize for that. You've got the septic tank, which is generally going to have two sections, one of uh, one riser, one one opening on each side. Although when they are pumping it, they really only need to get to the one side. Then you've got drain field, otherwise known as uh, field line, and there are different materials that a field line, a drain field can be made out of. I don't like that that's blurry, so let's make it smaller. Um, and these days they use what's called a dome system, which seems to be very, you know, uh, efficient, does a great job. In the 90s, they used gravelless pipe, which is a whole different thing. It's a very small, like a sock, and it does, it can over time have some problems. Um, but in general, septic systems are great. Uh, it will be there until the end of time. Uh, uh, and it, it really is an alternative, basically, to tying on to the city's septic system, a sewage system, whatever they have, where it goes to a treatment plant, down, goes flows down the road. Yes, we are talking about a gross subject here, guys. Sorry about that. But it needs to be talked about. So groundwater comes in into the house and and i think the idea of this what this chart is trying to say here is that the groundwater needs to come into the house from somewhere upstream of where the 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 used water is going out right because a lot of times especially in where we operate in severe county you're dealing with a well so it would be designed that way the well and this in the field line should not be anywhere near each other and they won't be so uh one more thing to note you do generally want to have depending on your state and your jurisdiction uh somewhere around a hundred feet of field line per bedroom of the house a lot of people say well it should be number of bathrooms no because think of it this way you could have 20 bedrooms in one bathroom you've still got 40 people using that one bathroom just uh, often or you could have one bedroom and six bathrooms but if you can only sleep two people per bedroom or three or whatever it may be you know number of bedrooms is the proper way to determine the number of people that are going to be in the house and how much use this is going to get so one uh th this particular property is, is is sort of uh illustrating one per bedroom i would guess let's say this is a little three bedroom farmhouse um, and, and, and that is a fairly common occurrence, or, or a lot of times you will just have a straight line of 300 feet of one field line. It's a little bit more common to do about 100 at a time, depending on, you know, how much space you have. And then you also are going to want to have a, uh, a reserve area, because what happens is if this fails, if this field line fails, they're not going to want to dig this up and put in a new one because you've got some nasty soil, soiled soil, right? So they want a, a, sep a separate section over here where they can rebuild a new field line and leave this one where it sits and just shut it off. So you would just basically put a switch in here and you could literally flip the switch if you wanted to underground and switch it to the new field line. It's generally how that, if, if you don't have space for that, you're then talking about replacing the field line that's already there that's a bit more of a difficult uh, situation. You're, this would have to be hauled off to an environmental protection agency of some sort, and it would be a little costly. So if you can just start new over here, it's a little easier. As you can see, here is an actual Sevier County um, sewer septic file on a particular property. This is some property I was looking at at one point or another. I don't know what this property is, but let's just... Uh, and, and by the way, you can get your... If you're looking at a property in Sevier County, just... Google Sevier County Environmental Health, call them and say, hey, I'm interested in, let's just go with whatever this is, 3452 Robeson Road. Is there any way I can get the septic file? And they'll probably send it to you. They may be a little weird about it. Just call back. But there's, it's just going to be like two people that work there. So be super nice. Just say, hey, I'm going to buy this house. I'd like to get the septic file. And they'll give it to you. They'll email it to you. 
So you got to, this was, this is from prior to the house being built, uh, which is why it says proposed three bedroom. So they permitted them for three bedroom septic and they ended up with 370 feet of field line, which is a little more than three bedrooms. I would imagine that they ended up putting a four bedroom property on this uh, lot because what happened is, is back in the day, uh, they didn't uh, come back and look. And this is, this is dated 2000 and, uh, well, it was dated 2001. So who knows? Because, uh, I believe it was 2008 when they started to come back and look. So basically they could go get a permit for a three bedroom house, put a four bedroom house on there and nobody really ever checked. And we see this all the time. I'm not saying it's a good thing or, you know, but it is fairly normal. I've got several undersized septics. You got to determine if that's something that's going to work for you. So, um, anyway, you got 370, which is really close to four bedroom. I think that's probably why they went a little over because they were planning to put a bigger house here. Let's talk about the tank itself. They're always, for the most part, going to be concrete. You'll see the name Ashley often. Uh, Harmon's pretty common. Th th this is who made the tank, just a local company, whatever. Um, and nine, nine times out of 10, they're going to be a thousand gallons. And the size of the tank is not gen generally determined by the size of the house. They're pretty much always going to be a thousand. Pretty much always. <laughs> so uh, you've got 75 uh, minutes per inch, which is a little high. That means the soil is very compact and dense. So it takes it a while to, you'll see 100 minutes sometimes, 45 minutes sometimes. Do you care? Not really, but you might care if you start to get a little more undersized. If the, if the system is super undersized and the soil takes a long time, then you might have a couple of issues. Again, guys, r remember, these pro this property's probably been there for 25 years, maybe longer. So if it hasn't had any problems in that a period of time, you know, maybe it's okay. But anyway, you got one, two, three, four, five field lines here, um, A, B, C, D, E. A, B, C, D, E. For a total of 370 feet, you have 100% reserve. So if this were to fail, they would just simply put in a new one right here. Septic tanks themselves do not, again, generally, knock on wood, fail. You would have to really kind of drop a bomb on that thing. It's made out of concrete. But the field line, what happens is the, let's say you got a brand new tank. Let's go back to my other uh, diagram there. You got a brand new tank. And you got a brand new field line. What happens is, is the house starts getting used, laundry. And of course the, the toilets are the gross part, right? And the, and the showers. The solids go to the bottom of the tank. The liquids are not as heavy. So they stay, you know, they will rise to the, to the top as the more the system is getting used. And then they will, the liquids will come out into the field line and percolate into the soil and then down into the, uh, into the earth. Now, what happens is if you don't get this thing pumped, the over time, the solids can accumulate to the point where they are so high that they are starting to leak out into the drain line, into the field line. And that's when you have problems. If, if you get to that point, you're probably going to end up replacing field line. The septic tank, again, generally is not going to need to be replaced. I am not an expert. I am not licensed in any way, by the way. I'm not a plumber, nothing. I'm just simply speaking about my experience. So long story short, if you pump the tank and everybody's going to give you a different number on that once every, once a year, once every three to five years, whatever it may be, it, it really depends on how heavily it's being used, as you might imagine. Um, if you pump the tank and you maybe use some Ridex or some sort of uh, proper, you know, Again, somebody with a license comes and services this thing occasionally. It's going to function likely if it's taken care of until the end of time, knock on wood. Um, so if the tank hasn't been pumped in 20 years, you're going to want to get it pumped. Just get it pumped. It's like 300 bucks, maybe 400 bucks to get the tank pumped. No big deal. If you're buying a new house, it's a good idea to go ahead and plan to get that pumped after you buy the house. And at that time, they'll probably say, yeah, it looks great. No big deal. Just call us in two more years or whatever it is. Um, so that is septic systems in a nutshell, uh, based loosely on uh, how things work in Sevier County, Tennessee. And again, you can join us anytime at the shorttermshop.com and on Facebook, the Short Term Shop Group.